Welcome to May 2024. We are now in this open period that we are free to create, plant seeds, and literally put some things out there into the universe. It's time for us to manifest. There are no personal planets in retrograde. We begin the month with this Taurus energy that is very grounded and calm and practical. It strategizes. It has patience. Uh, Jupiter is also now moving through its last days of uh, beginning in the sign of Taurus this month. So expect topics like your money, your personal resources, cash, um, self-sufficiency, your material items to be at the forefront of your thoughts at this time. Now mid-month, Mercury is going to be out of its shadow and Gemini energy is now going to come into the picture in a very major way. Not only when the sun shifts into Gemini on May 21st, but also when Venus moves here on the 24th, and on May 26th, Jupiter also moves into Gemini. This really brings about these Gemini themes, not only for the short term, but also for the long term because of Jupiter being in Gemini until June of 2025. So the third week of the month is really going to bring about this restlessness of energy that's going to be a shift within you. Now, Gemini themes, they include travel, communication, like writing or sharing projects. It's it's basically, it's communication and social interactions. It's about uh, mobility, cars, flying, um, writing, journaling, talking on the phone, email, phone, text, and even possibly like moving your location, moving your home. This shift can bring about these big moves that are all also including big purchases, big sales. If you need a new vehicle or a device or there's a move, this is going to be the time period that you're going to plant the seeds to make these things happen. Hi, I'm your astrologer Patricia Tate and this is your May 2024 astrology forecast for all 12 signs. To get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. Now let's dive in. So for Aries Sun and Aries Rising, we are starting off with, um, on May 1st, we have a lot of this, this Taurus energy, all of these things that are going on in your second house. The second house represents your cash, your property, your self-worth, it's your salary, it's your income, it's your work ethic, it's your self-esteem. The second house is what do I need in order for me to feel secure? people, places, and things that you surround yourself with. And um, so Jupiter, it's going to be, uh, we had this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, and it happened um, last month, and the energy is going to still manifest until about May 8th. So we know that all of these seeds are now being planted for the first, first full week of May for you. And this is putting out there things that you want to, uh, these new moon intentions, these, it's what do I want to grow? What does the universe want to bring for me in order for me to be shifted? Remember that Uranus is shock, surprise, and Taurus is um, an earth sign that just doesn't want to, and Jupiter is let's expand it in a big way. So these are sudden shocks to move you forward on your um, best and highest good path and potential. So as we move forward to uh, May 7th, on May 7th, we are going to have this um, new moon in the sign of Taurus. Now, if you notice, we have um, still Jupiter, Uranus, Sun, Moon, and Venus. So we talked about Jupiter and Uranus. The Sun represents your identity or it represents your path, your ego. And so the Moon represents your habits, your your memory, your like what is on the inside. When the two of these come together, you do not see the Moon. It's a time to uh, plant seeds. It's an, it's an opportunity for these new beginnings. And so you're planting seeds in the fertile soil of Taurus. Taurus is earth, ground, Venus is love, money, people you love, places that you love, it's cash and resources. Now setting these new intentions, this is an opportunity for you to set them for um, financial growth, your personal stability, focusing on new ways that you can enhance your income. Remember that this is in a trine to your career, your job, your legacy of you being seen in the outside world. I would also encourage you because 
because Taurus is about um, taking care of yourself. It's earthy and solid and Venus is here. So focusing on personal self care for yourself, taking care of your physical senses, starting um, a new health plan could be like gardening or earthing or initiating something that you will take care of your mind, your body, your temple. Also, uh, new seeds that can be planted at this time. This is about long-term goals that you want to plant over a longer period of time and that require patience, uh, whether it's going to be, I want to plan to buy a home. I want to purchase this. I want to start this new business. I want to cultivate and start this new skill. Remember, the second house is about your talents and your skill set. So you're setting these new intentions of what do I want to do that I can plant the seeds that I can grow over a longer period of time and they will manifest um, that way. Then as we move forward to May 23rd, on May 23rd, we now have this uh, beautiful full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. So we have the sun and Venus um, pretty darn close to each other, almost in a conjunction in the sign of Gemini in your third house. So the sun is illuminating your thoughts, your ideas, how do I communicate, uh, connection to siblings, neighbors, uh, people that you communicate with on a daily basis but the full moon is what is opposite. The sun is here, it is like literally illuminating the moon. And full moons, they bring endings and closures, they're times of culminations, they also reveal things. And so your full moon is occurring in your ninth house. So the ninth house is these cross-cultural experiences, classes, workshops, so maybe you are ending a class or workshop, ending having something published. It's also legal matters. The the ninth house is about foreign people, places, things, and deep dive into religion, deep dive into spirituality, wanting to understand things on a broader uh, spectrum. And so the full moon in Sagittarius is totally uh, opening up the sky saying, I need more adventure. It's revealing where you want to move and grow and expand in your life. It's about, I want a quest for a meaning. This is a perfect opportunity for you to embrace the growth and to explore and expand your horizons of, of ending some things and being able to expand on some new things. And so you could be planning on your next journey, planning your next vacation. This could be in the pursuit of knowledge. I want to take this class. I want to take this workshop. I want to study this. I want to teach this. I want to publish this. Um, this could be signing up for workshops. This could be broadening your horizons and, and your perspectives with connecting with people far and wide and wanting to understand intellectual growth through this connection. Also, this could be a really great time to say, I need new experiences. I need new adventure in my life and I need to plan it. And what does this look like? Um, I love this for you because Jupiter, um, I'm sorry, Sagittarius trines your first house of self of Aries. I need to initiate this. I need to put this plan into place. I need... I need excitement. I need more discoveries. I I have this feeling of wanderlust. And how do I how do I take the initiative for my best and highest um, growth potentials to explore and understand some things? So because this governs the the realm of different philosophies and different uh, like higher thinking and and different cultures, this is really going to be a powerful time for you to also reflect and examine your own personal beliefs and you might want to set up a time where you can uh, meditate or connect with others who are on um, the same thought as you are or connect with your higher self. It's really going to be a potent time for you to gain this clarity about what is truth, what is wisdom and what does it really mean to you. Now, on the same day, um, this is probably what I think is the biggest aspect of this month, is we have Jupiter in its final stages of the, of the sign of Taurus in your second house. So Taurus is now getting ready to, I'm sorry, it's not Taurus, Jupiter 
is now getting ready to leave your second house and it's in this beautiful sextile a sextile is this harmonious aspect working with Neptune in the watery sign of Pisces, but that's in your 12th house. So your 12th house represents your dreams, your intuition, your connection to the psychic realm, its ancestors and guides. It's it's about transcendence. It's about connection to the, the divine, your higher power, your spirit guides, whatever those things may be. Now, the 12th house also represents um, its many different things and some difficult things, but since this is a sextile, this is taking all the positive things that can come from the deep, dark, and hidden 12th house and manifesting them and growing them because Jupiter wants to expand. The sextile between these two planets, it creates this beautiful, harmonious energy between what is tangible in your second house of your self-worth, your um, your talents, your skill set, your income, your possessions, and blending it with um, transcending with your dreams, your hopes, your visions, blending Jupiter's expansive influence in the realm of material abundance and how do you create the stability with Neptune's spiritual and imaginative depth of understanding your dreams or connecting to your dreams to say, this is what I need to do. This is what I feel called to do. This is how it will meet my needs spiritually. This aspect is really going to encourage this grounded yet um, a soulful approach to what you are trying to grow, where your dreams and your ideals can be pursued by taking these uh, practical steps. Remember Taurus is earth and, and how do I move forward in a grounded way? How can I manifest my visions, the Neptune, into a reality? This is fostering this atmosphere of, of, of creativity and art and your personal resources and in pursuit of your material security, because remember this again, this trines your your 10th house of your career, your job, your legacy, your reputation, your ambitions. It's people seeing you from like the, the top of your chart and using your resources, using your abundance of what you have extra of and saying, how can I... Um, how can I gain from this spiritually and potentially make this a lucrative opportunity for myself? And also it's how can I blend pragmatism with idealism, like pushing you to say, how can I apply my dreams in a concrete way that really enriches not only your personal life, but for your community and for those in the world that are around you. This is what can I do for myself and how will it also benefit the other people that I have um, contact with or that I want to give back to. Neptune is one dream, one belief, one world, we're all one. So Aries, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Taurus Sun and Taurus Rising, the um, energy that we've been talking about being very earthy and solid and stable and grounded all revolves around your first house of self. It's all about you, your identity, things that you want to start. It's about you being seen. It's your outlook on life. It's your happiness, your self-expression, your personality. It's your desires. It's your interests. Literally, the first house is you, your body, your mind, your spirit, your temperament. It is you, your demeanor. I always say it's like your business card or your website. It's how people can also view and see you and what you want to present to the world. And so we have um, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that occurred in April 
the energy is still magnified until May 8th. So the conjunction is still bringing you these opportunities for these connections with people, places, and things in order to plant these seeds to move you forward. Jupiter is expansive and Uranus is shock and surprise and totally upsets the apple cart. It's like bringing this, this it's like a lightning bolt saying, this is the area in which you need to change. And so the energy is going to con continue until May 8th. So let's move forward and talk about um, May 7th. On May 7th, you're going to have this beautiful new moon. It is in your first house of self and um, the sun. The sun rules over your fourth house of your home, your family, your roots, your foundation, your traditions, and the moon. The moon rules over siblings, cousins, neighbors, and the way that you communicate. So we know that you are planting these seeds, that you want to create something that will have financial growth, some stability, uh, enhancing your resources that have to do with the way that you communicate and something that has to do with building a stable home life, building something that has to do with a strong foundation in, in order for you to build your life upon. Now, uh, as you set these new moon intentions, um, I would I would definitely throw them out there for definitely financial growth, definitely for stability, because this is wanting to build a home or foundation, wanting to understand possibly your past in order to build upon like your traditions of where did things come from. The fourth house also represents um, not just your foundation, but it represents like real estate and it represents property and it represents people that feel like family or the people that um, have helped support you as a pseudo family member. So focus on ways that you can um, increase your income, manage your resources and manage the growth that's expanding within you. Also, I would encourage you to focus on self-care. Taurus being earthy and grounded cares. It's about caring for your mind, your body, your spirit as a temple. Venus is here. Who do I love? How do I love? What do I love? Bringing beauty into your everyday life and focusing on um, starting healthy plans. This could be with eating or like nutrition or self-care, um, getting out there and earthing and grounding. But this is initiating something new that can be um, uh, grow and change and evolve over time planting these seeds that of things that deeply matter to you whether i want to start a new home i want to start a new business i want to cultivate this um, the way that i'm communicating with people um, all of these things are a reflection of you and how you are building up and changing and evolving um, everything that has to do with you, your new outlook and how you want to share how you're changing and growing and evolving for other people to see and know. So this could be, I want to be known as a healer. I want to be known as a parent. I want to be known as like, what do you want to be known as? And so first house themes. All right. So then moving forward, I want to look at May 23rd. So on May 23rd, we now have this beautiful full moon. The sun now moving into your second house of your self-worth, your cash, your properties, um, things that you need in order to feel secure. It's your skill set. It trines like your career, your job, your legacy. So it's saying, I I want to, I want, I have created these new moon intentions, and then this is where I need to show some endings and I need to move forward with some things. So the sun in the sign of Gemini, how am I communicating this? What does this look like? And the full moon in your eighth house. Now the eighth house for you represents these shared resources that you share with, it could be family members. This could be, so like, let's say that you have joint property or you've had, this is the house of deep psychological. So this could be an ending to some things that you have gone through with specific family members that could be, um, I would say like deep 
or traumatic or have created um, these deep memories within your heart and your soul. The eighth house is also about your connection with business partners, uh, significant others, and exes because it's all forms of resources money, alimony, child support, uh, debt. So this could have you paying off debt. This could have you leaving a connection that you have with somebody that you have these shared resources, like you're separating some things or that you're paying off this debt that you both have together. But full moons, they always bring about endings and closures and they reveal some things. And the eighth house has everything to do with these joint ventures and it's deep and psychological also so this could have you ending this connection that you have with somebody or paying off this the the debt that could be shared with others now because it's in the sign of jupiter the positive that also comes from this is sagittarius is all about the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom it's higher thinking it's fiery it is wanting to dive into um, something that's new that'll fascinate you since it's um the eighth house this is the house of secrets of uh, taboo topics of things that you don't always like share with other people. So this might have you saying, I want to sign up for a class or a workshop, or I want to be connected with others that I can um, share this part of my life with, but it possibly in seclusion or pro possibly in private. It's about broadening your, your perspectives. And it's also uh, committing to this intellectual growth. Um, this is you planning your new big adventure because Sagittarius wants adventure. They need adventure. They want experiences. The eighth house is the house of birth, death, and rebirth. It's the house of transformation. It's also the house of sex. And it's like you saying, I want to explore some new parts of my psyche. I want to go into some uncharted territories. I want to discover some uh, new people, places, and things. Now, this could have some things revealed, um, and this could also have some things that are ending, and um, this could also have you connecting to other people that um, for, for you to gain clarity on what do you want to do to move forward with, um, like, uh, I'm thinking like, okay, if we're ending things with family members, were these difficult taboo topics, and now I want to understand where this came from. If it's exes, it's um, how can I put these uh, healthy limitations on this and explore other options. If it's um, significant others or partners, this could be how can we expand things and make them better. This is going to be a really powerful time for you to go inward and reflect and to say, I need to understand the philosophies, the ideas, and the higher thinking. Full moons are always really powerful times and use this to re-examine your own beliefs, your own philosophies in order for you to either expand your horizons or to understand understand where others have come from. All right. Then on the same day, we also have what I feel is probably the biggest aspect of this month. It's Jupiter and Taurus in the last like minutes of Jupiter and Taurus is in your first house of self. Remember we had that Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And so Jupiter is here getting ready to leave your first house of self, but in this beautiful harmonious aspect to Neptune in your uh, 11th house in the sign of Pisces. Neptune is faith and belief and hope in your 11th house of your personal hopes, wishes, dreams, your goals, what you want to do and who you want to connect with spiritually. And so this is a, a it's a beautiful harmonious aspect saying, hey, let's create something beautiful. Neptune is taking your, your beliefs, your goals, your dreams, and um, linking what's tangible that has to do with you. Uh, Taurus is tangible. It's earth. It's grounded. And it's blending Jupiter's expansive influence on the realm of material abundance and the stability of Neptune's spiritual and imaginative path of what are your dreams? What are your goals? 
anything can be possible. How are you going to how are you going to ground this and make this happen? This aspect says I need to have um, a ground, a grounded yet a soulful approach to move forward where my dreams meet my ideals and I need to take these practical steps to manifest my dreams and my visions. I need to bring them into reality. This fosters this um, atmosphere of creativity and um, it's about the two planets offering spiritual enlightenment for your quest in order to um, support and enhance where you really want to go. You finding yourself more inclined also to say, these are my gifts, these are my talents, and can I make money from them? What do I want to share with the world? Um, potentially, um, how can I also use this opportunity to say, um, I want to apply my dreams in a concrete way that not only enriches me, but also how can I help my community? How can I do this? How can I share my dreams with the world? And who do I connect with? The 11th house are your connections with other people. That means um, like a star family or a work group or a team or a network. The 11th house is the peers that you connect with or social groups or teams of people that you have these shared visions with. So Taurus, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Gemini Sun and Gemini Rising, all of this Taurus energy is occurring in your 12th house. This has been magnified for the last year and it's going to continue uh, into the beginning part of May. So Taurus energy is earthy and solid and grounded. And so for the first, um, up until May 8th, you are focused on your dreams, your intuition, your psychic ability, your connection to the spiritual realm with ancestors and guides. This could be through the Akashic Records. This could be through meditation. This is about liberating yourself from being isolated or removed and it's, it's an opportunity opportunity to come out. I absolutely love this for you because the 12th house is where we take these deep journeys. It's where we go within to transcend and do the inner healing so we can connect to our higher power, the divine, our uh, like whatever you consider that to be. And so um, this strong manifestation with Jupiter and Uranus is going to continue until May 8th. So know that you should be looking for synchronicity of people, places, and things coming into your life all the way up to May 8th. Now, as we move forward to the new moon, the new moon happens on May 7th. On May 7th, we have um, the sun and the moon together in your 12th house. Now you're ready to plant these seeds. Now you're saying, all right, um, I want to plant the seeds of something that has to do with my self-worth, my cash, my property, my resources. That is the moon. What do I need in order to feel secure? And the um, Leo ruling the sun is your third house of who do you communicate this? How, how do you communicate? All forms of communication, talking, email, exchanging ideas, uh, friends. Um, this could be siblings, cousins, neighbors. Now, this new moon. This new moon is beautiful that now we're in this open and free period where the, the seeds that are planted now will grow May, June, July. We're in this open and free period. And so it's setting intentions of what can I do for my financial growth? How can I have the stability? How can I start something new that will enhance my um, resources, that I am comfortable, that I am stable, that I feel good about them? Use setting intentions that also have to do with self-care. The self-care is going to revolve around your mental, physical, spiritual, spiritual health and well-being of where you've put yourself on a back burner. The 12th house has to do with you and saying, I need to, I need rest. I need to reach. I need to have a place where I can retreat. I need to take care of my mind, my body, my spirit, and I need to focus on new ways of how can I create that 
and make it a daily occurrence in my life. This could be getting out and earthing and grounding or just having a place, taking a nice hot bath or being in water. It's going to be different for everybody, but Taurus is it needs to be grounded and the seeds need to be planted in fertile soil. So taking care of yourself. Also, this is a really great time for you to plant seeds that will be over a longer term, something that will grow over time. Taurus is earth, planting the seeds in the earth and saying, I want to, I want to start something. I want to buy, um, I want to purchase something. I need to, um, something that for your job, your career, um, remember that um, your second and your third, your second house is what do I need in order to have this financial security or emotional security? And so you are saying, what can I start that will cultivate a skill set that will support me as I move forward? All right. Then as we move forward to May 23rd, on May 23rd, you're going to have this beautiful full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. The sun has now moved into your first house of self. It's illuminating everything that has to do with you, the way that you communicate, how people see you, your outlook, your uh, your habits, your strengths, your image, your identity. Um, it's, it's literally the first house represents you. It's your uh, outlook, you being seen. I always say it's like your website or your business card. It's like, look at me. This is what I'm going to do now. And so the full moon is going to have closures or endings that has to do something with your plus one house. And so this could be with clients. Maybe they no longer need your service. This could be with um, a, a partner. There could be a separation of partnership. There could be an ending of something that has to do with a partner or something that's revealed with a partner and it could it could take things to a different level Sagittarius is about seeing the bigger picture and full moons always bring endings and closures and they reveal some things so this one is lighting up the sky and saying I need adventure and what does that look like I need to search for a quest of the meaning of of what what is this what is this relationship the seventh house is love but it's also about contracts and negotiations and it's the give and take house it's um, promises it's the house of negotiation cooperation and who you communicate with it's your plus one it's you and somebody else and you saying okay what is being revealed what am I going to now shift and change how do I expand this how do I move on from this this is fiery vibration vibrant energy. It doesn't always necessarily mean an end to that relationship in a bad way. It can be a friend moving away. Remember that the seventh house is best friends and significant others. And so there could be an end to the way that you're relating, or it could be an end to um, something that has to do with your relationships or um, uh, shifting of that energy. Now, things that can come from it. Sagittarius wants to pursue knowledge. It wants to understand. It's about um, you saying, I need to do this for me. I want to expand my understanding of the world. I want to understand, uh, I'm, I'm, this could be you saying, I want to expand my client base. And so I'm not going to be offering these services anymore, or I'm not going to be doing this anymore, but this is what I'm going to offer. It's planning for your future of, of Sagittarius energy is I am looking out at everything. I want to, um, I want to connect with my higher self. Um, I want to gain clarity into truth and wisdom of what it means personally. Um, there can be excitement of discovering new people, places, and cultures and uh, having this wanderlust. And this could be, this could literally be that, okay, this relationship has run its course and now we're going to go separate ways or this contract has run its course and we are now going to um, end it because um, I am shifting, I am changing, and this is no longer serving me for my best and highest good because I need to embark on different journeys. And so this could be a learning journey with taking classes and workshops. It could be um, new connections with clients 
or um, business partners. This could this could be okay. We're just going to par- part our separate ways because um, what we have together has has run its course. All right. So then the next, what I think is the biggest aspect of the month is going to be the Jupiter in Taurus. And this is in your 12th house. It's at 29 degrees and it's in this beautiful harmonious aspect with Neptune in Pisces, also at 29 degrees. That has something to do with your career, your job, your legacy. Um, The sextile between these two planets creates this beautiful harmonious link between what is tangible, what you can definitely create, and what is transcendent. It's about um, Jupiter has this experience expansive influence on I want uh, material abundance I want things to be stable and Neptune is spiritual it's an imaginative it's how can I use this for my career my job my legacy how can I like uh, this this is my professional life it's it's my reputation the tenth house is you in the outside world of like your reputation of where do you want to leave your mark on society what can you give back to others and how do you want to be known for this and so this aspect says i need to be grounded yet i need to have this soulful approach to my growth as i'm changing and evolving i need to be focused on my dreams and my ideals and i can bring these things together and i can pursue them by having having practical, earthy, grounded steps to manifest my visions. I'm bringing in the the Taurus energy and the vision energy of Neptune, where the pursuit of your material security and your quest for spiritual enlightenment and what you can share with others kind of merges together. This brings into uh, play your personal resources. It brings in the abundance of what you have to offer um, spiritually. This could be your spiritual talents. Um, This could be about what you have learned by being isolated or being removed or uh, remember that the 12th house is the house of where I have done the inner healing, where I take those deep journeys, where I've gone within and I've connected either with my shadow self or I've done the shamanic work or past life regressions. The 12th house is the house that's hidden and dark and you can only connect with your with your mind and through your dreams and through um your spirit guides your ancestors your angels and so this is how do you find yourself more inclined to now take these gifts and talents and how can i help others how can i uh, have the spiritual meaningful uh, connection and how can i create these concrete ways to make what I want to do lucrative in my personal life, but also share it with the community and um, the world with those people that are around me. And so Gemini, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising, the Taurus energy that has been um, shifting and changing in your life and magnifying is all about you and your personal hopes, wishes, dreams, and goals. Know that you have this free period between May, June, and July to put out your intentions to manifest these dreams, these goals of who do you want to align yourself with? Who's your star family? Who are your groups and your networks with that can help you get to where you want to be? Now, the Jupiter-Taurus conjunction that happened a few weeks ago is still going on and still magnifying energy in your life until May 8th. So definitely look for synchronicity of people, places, and things that are going to be coming into your life that uh, that can, through your networks or through your connection to peers or through work groups of aligning you with where you want to go. Remember that Uranus was shocking and like dismantling a lot of things that were going on. And now you have this opportunity to say, the dust is settling, but I have still new opportunities that are coming my way. 
So on May 7th, you're going to have a beautiful new moon. I absolutely love this new moon because it's about planting seeds into fertile soil. The sun rolls over your second house of your self-worth, your skill set, your cash, your property, things that you need in order to feel safe and secure. It is your income, your scout, your, your salary. The, the second house is your, your gifts and your talents. It's your work ethic. Now the moon, rolls over you your first house of self so every time the moon does something you know it affects you personally how you see the world how people see you it's your appearance your identity your body your general temperament it's you being seen it's your outlook it's you being in tune to what is going on in the world and so you know internally that it's your time it's your time that you are ready to plant these seeds you have uh, been through the ringer and now it's time for you to say I want to focus on new ways for me to enhance um, my income to enhance or manage my resources in a better way um, the 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 sign of Taurus is I need to plant seeds that will grow over an extended period of time also Taurus is about self-care and so this is you putting into place where do I need to put in self-care practices the first house is all about you your mental your physical your spiritual like your self-care of your mind your body your spirit um, connecting earthing grounding getting into water um, initiating or putting in new routines that are going to be healthy for you um, in order for you to maintain them over a longer period of time um, starting a new health program where it's your diets and vitamins and supplements literally planting seeds that matter deeply to you of things that you want to cultivate and grow they have to do with what are your dreams? What are your hopes? What are your wishes? And um, being persistent and patient because Taurus is slow and steady. Whether it's I want to buy a new home, I'm ready to start this business, um, I have this skill set, what can I do with it? This is you saying, who do I connect up with? What seeds do I put out there? This is me coming into what I'm meant to be doing. All right. So then as we move forward, on May 23rd, we're going to have this beautiful full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. Now the sun has now moved into your 12th house. Um, the 12th house represents uh, dreams, intuition, psychic ability. It also represents self-sabotage, um, hidden enemies, uh, isolation, where we go within. The 12th house is you connecting through the Akashic records. The, t the 12th house is where we go to withdrawal in order for us to connect and do the inner healing in order for us to transcend. It's This will be a time where you're going to say, I need to connect within to understand what's going on and what do I need to do? What is ending in my life? The full moon in the sign of Sagittarius is in your sixth house. So the sixth house is what do you do on a daily basis? It is um, how am I of service to other people? And so this could be with people that you work with or this could be family the sixth house um, is your daily habits you needing to take very good care of yourself with nutrition and your health and your daily routine and alternative health so it could be like essential oils or tapping or sound therapy or like doing a float or um, anything that's going to take care of you what the full moon's going to reveal is where you have taken care of others to the detriment of yourself the sun being in your 12th house is where you're going to sit and meditate with it and say yeah this is not good for me this is not healthy for me this is where some things need to end and i need to put myself first i need to put into place where um, self-care is a priority I need to put forth this energy um, I love Sagittarius energy because it's adventurous and it's about understanding I'm ready to grow 
I'm ready to explore. I'm ready to expand my horizons. And so how do I tap into this? Well, the the taking care of others needs to be limited so you can grow and expand yourself. Sagittarius is the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom. And so maybe you sign up for a class, maybe you sign up for a workshop. This could be with other people. Um, how do I um, expand my understanding is that looking at books how do i explore do i plan a vacation do i plan downtime do i plan um, a time for me to go to a spiritual retreat or a meditation um, how do i broaden my horizons and my perspectives about self-care and my daily habits and how can i bring this to the forefront um, how do I plan my next move? Um, I'm ready for some adventure. I'm ready to explore some new things. Um, I'm ready to make my dreams a reality. Um, I have this wanderlust and what does it look like? And who do I take with me? How do I do this? Um, the moon, it rules over your first house of self. And so we know that intuitively you're feeling this as a time of I need to go inward and I need to reflect and I need to look at my own beliefs. I need to reevaluate them. And I also need to consider what is going on with other people, their thoughts, their ideas. I need to meditate and I, I need to connect with my higher self. I need to connect with my, my higher power, my divine. And I need to gain clarity about the truth and the wisdom of what all of these things, these changes and these shifts mean to me personally. And then, then how can I use this to be of service to others? How do I take everything that I've gone through and then turn around and say, this is what I can offer you because of my spiritual growth, my emotional, my physical, my, my, my growth. The, the sixth house is where we find a guide or a mentor, but it's also what do I do on a daily basis? Now, as we, um, as we look at the month, what I feel is probably the most important aspect of the month that's going to be occurring on the same day is um, Jupiter is gonna be in Taurus, at 29 degrees in your 11th house like getting ready to leave remember the 11th house is your hopes your wishes your dreams your goals who do you align with your networks your star family it is um your your peers it is your networks it's people who you share beliefs with or who do you align yourself with now this is in a beautiful harmonious aspect both at 29 degrees neptune is in pisces neptune is faith hope belief dreams in pisces um like otherworldly in your ninth house of foreign people places things goals religion spirituality publishing the ninth house is you connecting to other people through other means like either going there or through taking a class or taking a workshop now the sextile between jupiter and neptune it creates this beautiful harmonious link between what is tangible your goals your dreams and this um uh, transcendent um belief system of i can do this because I understand this or I'm connected to these people or I'm taking these classes, taking these workshops and understanding this. Blending Jupiter's expansive influence in the realm of, think of material abundance or wisdom or knowledge and stability and Neptune bringing in spiritual and imaginative depth. The ninth house also represents like your, your dreams of prophetic dreams and visions of connecting to um, otherworldly. Now, this aspect, it, it, it offers this grounded earth, yet soulful approach to growth of what you are growing, where your dreams, this, this Neptune, and your 11th house, um, and your ideals can be pursued 
by practical steps. You saying, look, I want to, I want to manifest my visions into a reality. And how do I do this? It's going to foster this atmosphere of uh, creativity. And what does creativity mean to you? And how do you bring this creativity uh, and your own personal resources in a pursuit of material security and the quest for your spiritual enlightenment in the process of um, supporting and enhancing both of these areas of your life. You might find yourself also more inclined to wanting to support other people. Remember that the 11th house is where I I volunteer, but I join groups that I share with others. And this can be like book clubs or just clubs and organizations in general. And so how do you, how do you bring about these pursuits and make what you're doing also um, potentially lucrative, uh, these connections that you have. Uh, this transit's going to offer you this unique opportunity where you're going to blend uh, pragm pragmatism with idealism, urging you to apply for your dreams in a concrete way to move forward that not only enriches your personal life, but also how can I share this with the community and those people that are around me. So Cancer, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Leo Sun and Leo Rising, the Taurus energy that you've been experiencing is all at the top of your chart. It is you being seen by others. It's your legacy, your goals. It's your reputation. It's literally like the top of your chart is, is about your professional life. It's how you want uh, other people to see you, but it's, it's what you want to achieve in life. And so all of this energy is going to be magnified with uh, Taurus uh, Jupiter in Taurus until um, May 8th. So know that the Jupiter-Taurus conjunction happened, but it's still bringing you abundance of opportunities until around May 8th. So look for synchronicity of people, places, and things that are brought to you and you being seen as like this figure of authority. Now, we are in this open and free period from May, June, and July to plant these seeds that you want to manifest and grow over a longer period of time. So make sure that you are taking advantage of it this month. Um, I absolutely love it. All right. So as we move forward on May 7th, on May 7th, you're going to have this new moon in the sign of Taurus. Again, top of, top of the chart. It has Venus here, Uranus, Jupiter, like all of this energy is saying, look, magnify this. You are ready to plant the seeds. Um, this is about financial growth. This is stability, your career, your legacy, ways that you can enhance your income. Now, the sun, it rolls over your first house of self, how other people see you. It has to do with your identity. The 12th house, the moon represents your 12th house, which is all about, these are my dreams. And this is where I have self-sabotage. This is where I need to tune into the things that I have available to me, either through uh, meditation or my intuition or my transcendence to my connection to the divine or spirit. Um, through angels, anything. It's like taking what I know and how I'm being seen and using it for a career or as for your reputation. This will be a time for you to set your intentions of what do you want to grow for financial growth? What do you want to grow for your personal stability? Focusing on new ways that you can enhance your income or that you can manage your personal resources more effectively because this is all about you and where you there has been some possible self-sabotage and intuitively you know, know better, do better. And so also taking care of yourself. Um, Taurus is a sign that says, I need to be grounded, but I also 
need to focus on self-care. We've got Venus here. Venus is the goddess of, of love and beauty. And so this is taking care of your physical self, your senses. And this could be starting a new health plan, vitamins, supplements, um, getting uh, an adjustment from a chiropractor or a Reiki master, going to a sound bath, anything that just basically takes care of your mind, your body, your spirit, and engaging in these regular tactile activities, as in swimming or earthing, like going for a walk in the woods, or um, starting some kind of a health routine. Also, with this new moon, it's I need to plant seeds for a long-term goal um, that matters deeply to me. Um, planting the seeds of something that will grow over a longer period of time that I need patience with. It's It could be, I want to buy a home. I want to make this vacation a reality. I want to start a new business. I want to work on this skill set, so I need to take these classes. All of these are potential opportunities for you. Then. On May 23rd, you're going to have a full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. This, so the sun has now shifted into your 11th house of your networks. Who do you align yourself with in order to meet these goals? Is this a study group? Is this, this is what you're hoping, wishing, dreaming, what you want to happen. This can be a star family. This could be um, your people who share the same beliefs. So this could be, where do I want to volunteer my time? Who do I network with um, like for your job? Or um, again, like a study group or something that you want to, so if you're practicing something or something that you want to be good at, then you have to align yourself with people that understand how to do that. Now, the moon is full in your fifth house. The fifth house represents uh, children, but it also represents childlike activities or creativity, art, music, um, anything that brings you personal joy. It's also the house of where we take risks. It's the house of, of love affairs and where you want to go and do things that uh, bring you joy and pleasure. That, uh, that's, that it could be sports, it could be gambling. The Literally, the fifth house is uh, this is what makes me feel good and this is what I want to do. So there's going to be some kind of an ending or a closure. This could be a project that's going to be ending. This could be you finalizing something to do with art or poetry or music. Um, something with your children that could be ending. This could have some kind of a closure that has to do with, like it could be a kid moving out or a kid graduating or you finishing that project in order for you to start something new. So full moons, again, endings, closures, and culminations. But the gift that comes from a full moon in Sagittarius is this burst of adventure, this, this quest for the meaning of life. And I want to grow. I want to explore. I want to expand my horizons. And what does that look like? And so you saying, I'm ready to start this new journey and I, I need to connect up with these people in order to make it happen. I want to learn to play the piano. I want to travel here. I want to understand this. I'm going to take this class. I'm going to take this workshop. I want to have this wisdom. I want to... Um, it's all about learning, exploring, and, and this intellectual growth um, f that comes from broadening your personal perspectives and you saying, I need to initiate this and make this happen. Remember that um, this is trining your first house of self. So this is Leo, the, you know, Leo, the sun or Leo rising saying, I, I, I need to roar. I need to make this happen. This will make me feel good. Um, the, this is a, it's, it's a fire of the spirit of adventure and the thrill of these new experiences, these new opportunities that you're ready to do, um, planning your next journey. Uh, and it doesn't have to be like across the world. It could be like a small trip, but this is you saying, I need to, I need to plan. I need to have a future plan to make things happen in my life and it needs to be adventurous it needs to have excitement i need to discover new people places things these cross-cultural experiences that feeds my soul 
And so because Sagittarius rules or governs the realm of, of beliefs and philosophies and like higher thinking and higher knowledge, this full moon is going to be a really powerful time that you're going to uh, be able to stop and meditate and uh, reflect and go inward because it's trining your first house of self. It's you saying, I'm going to reevaluate my own beliefs, my own thoughts, my own philosophies that I live by. I, I might want to journal on this and say, what kind of a spiritual journey am I on? And I need to think about life's big questions. Remember, Sagittarius is the bigger picture. And I need to meditate and connect with my higher self. And what does wisdom and knowledge and what I'm gaining mean to me personally? And this, this energy is about an ending of some sort, but it's also an opportunity for this brand new beginning to explore. On the same day, we have what I feel is probably the biggest aspect of this month is uh, Jupiter that's in Taurus that's going to be leaving. It's in the last degrees. It's at the 29th degree at the top of your chart with your career, your reputation, where everything that started, it is in this harmonious sextile with Neptune in Pisces in your eighth house. So Neptune is um, faith and hope and belief and Pisces is dreams and intuition and your eighth house is your shared resources. It's the house of deep psychological birth, death and rebirth. And how am I taking all of this and merging it together? The sextile between Jupiter and Uranus really creates this beautiful harmonious link between what's tangible for your career, your job, your reputation and um, the, the transcendence of what it can become. Blending Jupiter's expansive influence of you being seen as an authority figure, um, p authority figures seeing you and believing in you, trusting in you, um, having this influence over the spiritual realm of I want to create material abundance from this um, with Neptune's spiritual and an, an imaginative depth of you sharing resources by um, this could be partner, this could be money that's invested. Remember the eighth house is your money or resources that are tied up with other people. It's uh, shared. So this could be family or exes or like alimony child support or business partners or significant others. You're blending Jupiter's influence in the realm of material abundance and saying, I have the stability of Neptune's uh, spiritual imagination and this depth that I can blend these two together. It's this grounded, and yet soulful approach to where these are my dreams, these are my ideals, this is what we can do, this is what I can do. I want to pursue this with practical steps, with um, how, like my knowledge, my wisdom, the things that I'm, I'm gaining with how people see me and being known as somebody who's an authority figure or this is what I want to do for my career, my life path. It's coming more into focus. And so it's fostering this atmosphere of benevolence, of this creativity, your persona using resources where you want this material security and you want the quest for spiritual enlightenment and you want both of these to enhance and support each other. So you might find that you're also supporting other people during this time because Neptune believes in like one world, one, one everything, one thought, one idea, one belief. I always say it's like um, the hive mind. And so you are looking at these pursuits with spiritual meaning and potentially I need to make this lucrative. How can I make money from this? And it offers you this unique opportunity to say, how can I blend what I want to do for my dreams in a concrete way that can not only enrich me, but how do I help and share this with the community and the people that are around me, like the world that's around me in order to make the world a better place. So Leo, I would love to hear 
your thoughts in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Virgo Sun and Virgo Rising, all of this Taurus energy is occurring in your ninth house of these cross-cultural experiences, foreign people, places, and things. It's higher wisdom, learning, knowledge, and you connecting with the outside world, you wanting to travel, uh, a deep dive into spirituality, uh, publishing, journaling, legal matters. Now, we had this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction here. Um, what's great that's coming from this is now we're in the time to plant seeds now we're ready to manifest and put things out there you're going to have may june and july um, a time to plant the seeds of what do i want to manifest there's no personal planets that are retrograde now jupiter the great thing that comes from this is jupiter is moving forward and this energy that came from this conjunction is still bringing you gifts and opportunities of synchronicity of people places and things coming into your realm until may 8th so look for the synchronicities of of people that you meet opportunities to travel taking of classes and workshops wanting to understand religion and philo uh, philosophy it's these potentials that you want to start and grow over a longer period of time all right, so as we move forward, on May 7th, on May 7th, you're going to have this uh, beautiful new moon. And so we have the sun and the moon together in that same house saying, let's plant the seeds. Now, the sun represents your 12th house of your dreams, your intuition, your psychic ability, letting go of self-sabotage, letting go of fear, tapping into your intuition and saying, this is my subconscious mind. I, um, can, I can tap into um, my dreams the Akashic records, I can tap into uh, connecting to the divine, I, I, I've i done this inner healing, I have been shocked, surprised, now I'm ready to push forth past these limits, because that's what Uranus was asking you to do. Now the moon rolls over your connection to other people, like your star family, The it's your networks, and, and it's also who do you connect up with for your hopes and your dreams and your wishes and your goals? And so this new moon is bringing in, what do I want to manifest? It is time for me to plant the seeds of what do I want to grow over a longer period of time. I need to now set the intentions. I want financial growth. I want financial stability. I want to travel. I want to take this class. I want to teach this class, something that has to do with legal matters. Um, I need to focus on new ways that can enhance my income and manage my resources more effectively uh, using science and technology and what is available out there to me. Um, I need to also focus on self-care. We have Venus here and Taurus is ruled by Venus and so this is saying how can I in a unique way focus on my physical sense um, I need to uh, this could be starting a new uh, health care plan remember that all of this trines your first house of self so we know that it has to do with you taking care of your mind your body your spirit and saying I need to take care of me um, all of me my my going to a counselor if I need to go to a counselor going to get a massage earthing going for a walk in the woods whatever that means to you this could mean a healthy eating plan it means like tactile things of walking around barefoot and also initiating these new routines into your life um, also during this time planting the seeds for future growth of something that will take a longer time period in order for you to grow. Do you want this for your business? Do you want this for travel? It's about things that will require patience. It's I want to buy a home. I want to start a new business. I want to cultivate this skill, this talent. These are things that I want to do. And what do, like, do I, I want to create uh, like I want to publish something like that the ninth house is not just learning but it's publishing and it's travel and it's legal matters so all of these can be a time for you to plant these new seeds to manifest over a longer period of time it's grounding the seed in and watering it properly all right then as we move forward 
to May 23rd. On May 23rd, we're going to have this beautiful full moon. Now, full moons. Full moons always uh, represent endings and closures and culminations. So you have the sun illuminating everything that has to do with your job, your career, your legacy, your, rep your reputation, you being seen in the outside world, either by authority figures or being seen as an authority figure. The culmination, the endings have to do with something that, that's at home. And so it's saying, I'm ready for adventure. This could be somebody leaving the home. This could be like ending something that has to do with home, um, like ending up a project. This could be literally like a move. Um, it's This could have to do with something with your foundation. Remember that the fourth house is uh, your past, it's your foundation, it's um, traditions, it's rituals. And so maybe you're ending a tradition and saying, I am ready for something new and something that's different because it's manifesting and growing Sagittarius energy. Sagittarius is a burst of energy. It's about a quest. It's wanting to get out there in the world and saying, I need to explore. I need these new horizons. And so there's uh, ways that we can do it is I need to study, I need to learn, and what does this look like? I need to dive into a new subject. Um, maybe it's I, I want um, less walls in the house to make a bigger space, or I need bigger space to live, up, live in, or um, uh, maybe signing up for a workshop. It could be traveling somewhere, exploring, expanding your understanding of the world. And this is really a powerful time for you to have this intellectual growth that will broaden your perspectives. This could be you understanding um, genealogy, understanding um, like your grandparents or your great grandparents or your parents or where you've come from or traditions of, of what, what made them them and how you can change or build upon that to move forward. The spirit of Sagittarius loves these new experiences. And so um, it's time, it's time for you to say, I need to put this in place. I need to have this end in order for this new beginning to start. I want to plan the new vacation. I want to plan the move. I want to plan something that has to do with a new house or the remodel of a house or the move of I need to feed my soul for wanderlust. I need to discover new people, places, and things, and new cultures, and what does that mean to me? Um, full moons, they also are times that um, they reveal the hidden, and so this is you meditating, uh, the realm of your beliefs, your philosophies, your higher thinking, and going within for reflection and to say, I might need to reevaluate my beliefs or my philosophies that I live by, by this, uh, by what has been revealed to me. And I, I probably need to connect to my higher self because this is a potent time for gaining clarity on what is truth and what is wisdom and what is, what is ending, what is being revealed and um, what is now starting that has to do with my home, my family, my roots, my traditions, my my foundation of people that feel like family or people that are family or with real estate or, or property. Now, as we move forward on the same day, what I think is probably the biggest aspect of the month is Jupiter, which is in the sign of Taurus in your um, ninth house which it's in the final stages, it's in the final degrees. And it's in this beautiful harmonious aspect at 29 degrees with Neptune in Pisces in your seventh house of it's your plus one. So it's business partners, significant others, friends, um, uh, clients. It's the house of love and it's the house of connections. I absolutely love this for you because Jupiter wants to expand and Neptune is... Uh, beauty and thought and creativity. And so this is a harmonious link between the two of these areas of your life of what is tangible, this growth that you want to have with traveling and experiencing things and um, connection to these cross-cultural experiences or publishing or legal matters and transcending and blending this Jupiter's expansive influence 
in the realm of material abundance with the stability of Neptune's um, spiritual and imaginative depths of clients and business partners and significant others and your connection to friends. This aspect is really going to encourage a grounded yet soulful approach to growth where your dreams and your ideals can now be pursued with like grounded practical steps in order to grow the seeds that you are planting. It's um, artistic creativity, it's material security, it's the quest for spiritual enlightenment, it's supporting all of these things, supporting each other, and maybe you find yourself at this time supporting others, possibly using your resources, your skill set, um, and then saying, how can I use this to make money with for a job or career? How can I use this to make this lucrative? And this this unique opportunity to say, I can, I can apply my dreams in a concrete way that not only enriches me personally, but also my community, my clients, my significant others, my partners, and, and also the world around me. So Virgo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Libra Sun and Libra Rising, the Taurus energy that has been manifesting over the last year for you, that the first part of the month is magnifying is your eighth house of your shared resources. It's the house of birth, death, rebirth, and major transformation, and it's often psychological. This is the house that we have these connections with family members that um, we have experiences with or um exes with like alimony and child support, business partners, significant others. It's the house of anything that we have together with other people that could be with contracts or with joint ventures that we are choosing or that we need to stay in connection with. So um, material where we've invested our money, alimony, child support, debt. Now, um, you had a Jupiter Uranus conjunction here a couple weeks ago. The energy of this is going to continue until May 8th. So you've had this major con this conjunction revealing, offering you all these opportunities of shaking up this area of your life. And it's bringing in synchronicity of people, places, and things that you can still work with until May 8th. So be on the lookout for anything that you might consider like uh, divine that you meet somebody through somebody else or, or that something is paid off or that money comes in or there's a transformation of, this is about liberation and freedom. All right, so then as we move forward on May 7th, on May 7th, we have a beautiful new moon. So now is the time to plant the seeds. We have a new moon in your eighth house. So now you've taken all of this wisdom, all this knowledge, been shook up, and these new things are coming at you. And we say the sun rolls over your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, the people that you are networking with, and the moon rolls over your career, your job, your legacy, your uh, being seen as an authority figure, your reputation. The 10th house is the top of your chart. It's like you where you, your public reputation, like where everybody can see you, um, your boss, the government. The 10th house represents not only you being seen as an authority figure, but authority figures seeing you. And so you're planting these seeds, these this new moon in these intentions of where you want to grow. Uh, you definitely growing your investments, definitely growing your your interactions, your connections that you have with other people. So now it's time to plant them in um, like soil that will like Taurus is the ground. And so setting intentions for your financial growth, for financial stability, new ways to enhance your income, being seen as an authority figure, like climbing the ladder, managing your resources more effectively. Who do you connect with in order to do that? This could be uh, networks to peers or teams or groups 
uh, for your job. Now, I'm also going to bring in self-care because Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus is in there and it's saying, I need to take care of my physical body, my mind, my body, my spirit. And so this means, um, do I start a new regimen for health care with vitamins or exercise? Um, do I get out in the yard and garden? Um, do I take, do I have a new routine that will take care of me? That needs to be part of the intention of how can I create these things and still take care of mind, body, and spirit. Planting seeds that will be over a longer goal that will um, deeply affect you. The eighth house is psychological and deep transformations, and this is healing your heart and your soul. This is emphasizing you, that you need to be patient with what you want to do. I want to buy a home. I want to have this money grow over a longer period of time. I want to uh, work on this skill set. I want to be the boss. I want to be the manager. I like. I want to own this. This is all part of this plan of planting these seeds for longer term growth. Then, as we move forward to May twenty third. So on May 23rd, you're going to have this uh, beautiful full moon. The sun has now moved into your uh, 11th, I'm sorry, your ninth house of uh, cross-cultural experiences, taking a class, taking a workshop. So now you're saying, what do I have to do? Who do I have to connect with in order to manifest these dreams, these goals? I love this because this is in a trine with who you are. You are now going to say, I need to move forward. I planted these seeds. This is what I want to invest in. This is what I want to grow. This is how I want to change. This is how I want to evolve. And this is what I have to do. Now there's going to be some type of an ending. The ending could be with who you are connected with, with um, neighbors, siblings, sharing this information this way. It could be ending the way that you're sharing the information. The third house really represents like who you connect with on a daily basis, how you connect with them, how you talk, how you exchange ideas. It's, it's neighbors and siblings and cousins and it's things that are short distance. So this could be ending a class or workshop that you are taking close to home and now you're saying, okay, I'm done with this. I'm ready to move on to uh, a different different ways of doing things. The third house being also technology. It could be, I'm, I'm ending the way that I'm doing this and now I'm going to embrace new technology, new travel. Um, a full moon in Sagittarius is about adventure. It's about a quest for meaning. It's about growth. It's about exploration and expansion of your horizons. And how do you do that? How do you embark on a learning journey about, I need to be better at this skill set. I need to understand um, Facebook better, YouTube better, YouTube. I am um, like MailChimp. Um, I need to understand understand I need to understand technology better in order to be able to use it or travel it, the third house is the house of knowledge and Sagittarius is the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom and there's going to be some type of an ending or closure with a new beginning that with the subjects of of I need to expand my my horizons on this. I need to, um, do I pick up a book? Do I take a class? Do I commit to understanding this? And how do I do this? I um, This is about intellectual growth and broadening your perspectives. And this is also on thoughts, ideas, and beliefs of others and being um, accepting or at least wanting to listen to their um different points of view. Um, also planning another adventure, probably something that's closer to home, but needing more thrill of excitement in your life, exploring a new town, hiking, any of these, anything that's you discovering something new that's like closer to home or different cultures, trying a new restaurant. Um, this is, I have a desire for wanderlust and I I can only do it here. So what does that look like? A new restaurant, a new coffee shop, um, meeting up with a new group. Also, full moons, they bring about um, um, this completion of your beliefs and f um, your philosophies and higher thinking and expanding upon the need to meditate and possibly calling upon a spiritual journey of yourself where you connect with your higher self and say, does this still 
um, meet with with my thoughts, my ideas, and my beliefs, and um, I need to gain some clarity. And can I uh, can I reevaluate some things? Can I expand upon these horizons horizons of my personal beliefs, my personal philosophies that I live by? And can I meditate? Can I connect with my higher self? Because it's in, it's in the sextile to your first house of self. So we know that you are wanting to gain clarity about what rings true to you with with mind, body, and spirit, and your beliefs. All right, and then on the same day, I wanna, what I believe is probably the biggest aspect of this month is Jupiter that's at 29 degrees, ready to leave your eighth house. Like you've planted these seeds, you're ready to say, I'm ready to invest. I have like these these shocking things have, have moved me in a new direction. Um, and I planted the seeds. And Jupiter in, is in this harmonious aspect with Neptune in Pisces, in your um, sixth house. Neptune is belief and dream and Pisces is watery and intuitive and your sixth house is daily habits. It's how can I take care of myself and how can I also nurture and care for others? How do I make what I want to do a daily habit? And so this sextile between um, um, Jupiter and Neptune, it creates this, this beautiful harmonious link between these two tangible um, planets saying um, Jupiter it, it wants to expand its influence in the realm of of tangible transcendence um, material abundance um, how can I create stability how can I make this uh, a daily habit who do I seek out as a mentor who do I seek out as a guide how can I use um, the abundance of Neptune and the stability of it with uh, with Neptune's like spiritual imaginative depth that it offers. How can I be encouraged to have this grounded yet this soulful approach to make my dreams and my ideals um, and use these practical steps? How how do I do this? Um, where my dreams and my ideals are pursued with practical steps. The sixth house is I need to find a mentor. I need to find a guide. I need to figure out what do I need in my life and how can I make this a daily practice in order to grow it over a longer period of time. Um, the sixth house is is beautiful in that it's it's your relationship with your coworkers. It's about taking care of yourself, and it's it's um, how can I? Um, it's it's alternative ideas to things. It's alternative ways. So it's not always doing things like by the book. It's like thinking outside the box, and so we have this. Um, dreams and ideals are now manifesting your visions and your dreams and fostering this atmosphere of benevolence of your your artistic creativity of how can i do this on a daily basis i want to i want to pursue material security and i want to have this quest for spiritual enlightenment I want to do it on a daily basis. I want to make it a daily practice. And how can I, these, these two planets are, are supporting each other. And you might find that you're wanting to support others by what you have to offer. So this transit's really going to offer you this opportunity to blend um, these two energies, urging you to apply your dreams in these concrete ways in that not only can you make money from it or um, feel good about it for yourself personally, but you can also support your community and the world around you because the sixth house is how do I give back and how can I make this a daily practice that it makes me feel good. So Libra, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. Com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Rising, the Taurus energy of the month has really been focused on your seventh house of partnership. Um, you've had a year of exploring, upsetting, and shocking, surprising things in your plus one house. So that's business partners, significant others, clients, one-on-one, -on -one, open enemies, exes, friends, uh, love, contractual agreements, 
all of this. Now, the great part that's going to be coming from it is this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. It occurred a couple of weeks ago and the energy of this is still going to be manifesting and growing bringing synchronicity of people places and things to you until may 8th so be on the lookout for that i absolutely love that for you now as we move forward to the new moon on may 7th you're going to have this beautiful new moon the sun rules over your career your job your legacy authority figures you being seen as an authority figure your public reputation it's the it's your 10th house it's the top of your chart where everybody can see you the moon rules over your desire to travel, your cross-cultural connections, your um, taking a class, taking a workshop, publishing, uh, journaling, all of these topics that include legal or you out there wanting to understand other different cultures, people, places, and things. Now you have this new moon that you are now, um, time. it's time to plant the seeds. So May, June, July are these open, is an open window period where the seeds that are planted now are for all of the growth that's come from the eclipses and the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So your intentions are for financial growth, financial stability. Uh, the seventh house is about love and contractual agreements. And so um, this could be uh, your, your contracts and agreements of, I would like to have uh, these things in place for clients, for business partners, for significant other this is uh, focusing on new ways that will enhance your income or for you to manage your personal resources uh, more effectively. Remember that this also includes you being seen as an authority figure or job or career. This is you saying, I'm ready to start new beginnings, new beginnings with clients, new beginnings with friends. Um, I, I need these fresh starts in love. I need these fresh starts with um, in negotiation and cooperation, like throw me a bone. I'm ready for some new in this area of my life. Now, I'm also gonna throw in their self-care because of everything that's been going on. Um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, Venus is there, and it's saying, look, are you taking care of yourself? your mind your body your spirit and this can be something that can be done with a partner or a partner giving you some time away but you focusing on ways that you need to start these healthy plans um, with a connection between you and a friend or between you and your partner like what is healthy do we seek out a counselor do we seek out a mentor do I seek out one for myself do I just get out there and garden do I like take a walk in the woods I'd like a partner to go with me it's you wanting to have these new moon intentions of planting these seeds for self-care. What does self-care look like for you? I would like to plant the seeds for these long-term goals that mean something to me because Taurus takes the seeds and says, I'm going to have this slow growth and manifest it over a longer period of time. So what do you want to start? It could have something to do with business, partnership, home, um, cultivating a, a skill. Like what do you want to do? Do you want to travel? Do you want to have these, uh, do you want to publish something, these cross-cultural experiences? You are planting these seeds of things that you want to do and grow over a longer period of time. All right, then as we move forward to uh, May 23rd, on May 23rd, you're going to have this beautiful full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. So the sun is now in your eighth house of your shared resources. This is the house of investment. It's the house where you are connected with somebody else. It could be with a business partner. It could be a family member. It could be an ex, like think alimony and child support. It could be your life partner. Um, the eighth house is the house of deep psychological birth, death, rebirth, transformation, um, my resources tied up with somebody else. So know that your son, you, your, your identity and your ego is like saying, I need to focus on this area of my life. And then what's having an ending is something to do with your self-worth, your cash, your property, your own personal assets, something that has to do with your skill set, your talents, your salary, um, 
An ending can be, I'm ready to sell this. I'm ready to get rid of this. The second house is, what do I need in order to feel comfortable and secure? And if something no longer serves you, you get rid of it. And then you have the money and the resources to do other things that you want to do. This is in a trine that has to be, that has to do with your job, your career, your legacy. It is also in a sextile that has to do with um, your home, your family, your roots, your foundation. So literally you're looking at this and saying, I need to have some endings of what is really important to me. And do I sell this off? Do I keep this? What do I need in order? Like, what is the most important thing to me? Like, is family the most important thing? Does does this thing that this heirloom that was passed down mean important is very important to me? Um, it's you saying, I have this adventurous spirit. I have this energy. I uh, like uh, Sagittarius is a quest for meaning. It's a quest for knowledge. It's wanting to explore things, to grow things, to have this expansion of otherworldly realms and wanting to expand your second house of your skill set, your money, your resources, your finances. It's everything that has to do with your financial condition and you. Now, along with this full moon, it could be um, finishing a class or a workshop and then saying, look, I need to know more about this. So I'm going to take another class or workshop. I want to sell this item, this no, this no longer, like I need to have it appraised. Um, or I need to, I want, I'm ready to explore um, different topics. Uh, I want to expand my knowledge of of something that you want to start. Remember that the new moon that happened in your seventh house is uh, you and a partner of what do you want to do together. And you're taking your partner's needs into consideration or you're taking um, where you, if you don't have a partner, this is about where I have my money tied up, where I have my investments tied up. And now you're saying, I need to get out. I need to explore. I need to do some things. I uh, I have this like restless spirit that um, I have been tied down and everything's been going on for so long that I need to fill up my soul's wanderlust. It does not have to be far and wide. It can be diving into a book, diving into a movie. Uh, it's just saying, I need to release what, what no longer serves me and I need to fill my soul up with some things that um, only serve the purpose of, of making me feel better, making me feel comfortable. Now, um, Sagittarius governs the realm of your beliefs and your philosophies. So some of those topics are, there could be an ending and new beginnings of, of new opportunities of, uh, wow, I've taken this time to reflect and I didn't, um, I didn't realize that about this. Or it's reevaluating your own belief system, your own philosophies. This could be taking time to meditate, to journal. Um, this is you questioning your higher self and meditating and saying, I want to know what, um, I, I need to gain some clarity. I want to know the truth about what does this wisdom mean to me personally and my security like this this has everything to do with your opinions your talents and you feeling the need to be secure and comfortable as you move forward all right so what i also feel as probably is the most important aspect of the month is going to be uh jupiter that's in taurus in your partnership sector so we have jupiter rocking your world shaking things up with uranus here but now is in a it's in a sextile which is a harmonious aspect to neptune in pisces in your fifth house the fifth house represents children affairs creativity where you want to take a risk your your um uh, it's it's about artistic endeavors it's art and music and it's connecting in this beautiful harmonious aspect between your children or these activities or creative projects or you uh, feeling childlike um, or adult playmates and saying i have this harmonious link between what is tangible 
and what is transcendent. Blending Jupiter's expansive influence in the realm of material abundance because I'm looking for these connections with uh, my finances, material abundance. Who can I connect up with for with a client or with um, a partner? This could be a business partner but it's expanding my personal resources, expanding my finances, or supporting my partner as they expand theirs. Um, Jupiter is expansive in the realm of abundance with stability, and Neptune brings about this um, spiritual and imaginative depth of, of something that has to do with I can be creative, I can do this, let me add this to it, or this aha moment that I have this soulful approach to growth. What does this growth mean? Um, where my dreams and my ideals can be pursued, I just have to have practical steps. I just have to have the idea in order to make it happen, in order to um, grow my dreams. My dreams and my ideals can be grown. I just have to have um, this artistic creativity. And this could be um, something that has to do with your children. It could be like where you're willing to take a risk. Um, like the, the fifth house has everything to do with um, how you express yourself. It's recreation, it's risk, it's excitement, it's beauty, it's love, it's children. And this could be having children or something that your children are also going through. So it may be your partner and your children. Um, you may find yourself more inclined to su supporting others at this time, like supporting your partner, supporting your children, and using your resources and your abundance that you have, anything extra that you have, to benefit others. Drawn to these artistic pursuits of how can I make this better? How, how can I make it more beautiful, more harmonious? Um, using your like using these unique opportunities of of blending your pragmatism with idealism because it's we're talking neptune and, and jupiter it's urging you to apply your dreams and make them grounded plant the seeds in a concrete way that will enrich not only your personal life but the the life of the lives of your children or, or the community or the world around you because the fifth house is love and joy that can be with a lover with children or with Neptune Neptune is one world we're all one together and so um, connecting with others and saying how can I take what I have possibly make money from it and share my resources with others that they could also benefit from it so Scorpio, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius Rising, I absolutely love this for you because your Taurus house is your daily habits. Jupiter and Sagittarius have really been rocking your world in order for you to take care of yourself, to make yourself a priority, for you to seek out the guidance of others, either through mentors or guides or counselors. It's an opportunity for you to say, I have given so much of myself to others. I need to take care of myself whether it's vitamins or supplements or chiropractic care, um, earthing, it doesn't matter. It's you making your daily habits or things that have to do with your pets, your mental, physical, spiritual, psychological, emotional, health and well-being a priority. Now, Jupiter and Uranus had a conjunction just a couple weeks ago. The energy will continue until May 8th. So focus on anything that's synchronistic of people, places and things that get brought into your path for new opportunities for growth in the area of, of nutrition or diet or health or pets or what you would do for a daily routine, uh, counselor, mentor, um, sitting alone and like receiving these information and also um, limiting, finding a balance between my home and my work and making sure that I put forth my needs first before I'm meeting the needs of other people. All right, so as we move forward, 
I want to bring your attention to the first lunation, um, which is on May 7th. So May offers us, May, June, and July are this, this open period to manifest, to grow things, um, because we have no personal planets that are in retrograde. So you're going to have whatever seeds that are planted now grow, change, and evolve over the next um, several months. But you have three months to like get the ball rolling, to plant those seeds and make it happen. So on April, I'm sorry, on May 7th, you have this new moon. And now you've had all of this stuff shake up in your life and say, hey, start this, do this. And now you're going to have to say, I'm, I'm willing to do this. I want to do this for my emotional growth, my financial growth, my stability in order to move forward. I need to enhance my income. I need to manage my, my resources of who do I have, who can I use. I need to be more effective with what I'm doing. I also need to make self-care a top priority. Um, Venus is the ruler of Taurus and Venus is here saying, look, it can be brought in with like, maybe you wanna get more exercise and maybe you join an exercise group or maybe you walk your dog on a daily basis or maybe you see your chiropractor. Um, there are so many opportunities out there. This is you starting a new healthy like eating plan or nutrition plan or just staying mentally, physically, spiritually sharp. And um, uh, this could be earthing and grounding and going for a walk in the garden or an, uh, initiating a new routine of I'm going to get more sleep. I encourage you to also plant um, these seeds for these long-term goals that the sun the sun rolls over your ninth house of these cross-cultural experiences. So you seeking out wisdom from uh, non-traditional, like not just a doctor. So maybe you seek out other types of practitioners or taking a class, taking a workshop, wanting to understand more. The moon uh, is about your shared resources and it's deep psychological. So this could be healing um, like deep psychological wounds or trauma that you have been going through. Now, planting these seeds that whatever your goal is, that it has to matter deeply to you and that it has to be persistent and you have to be patient, that it's not just going to change and evolve overnight. That um, if, if you want to um, be healthy, how are you going to do that? Um, diet, nutrition. If you want to start a new business, what are you going to do? Seek out a mentor, a guide, somebody with financial planning that can help you. If you want to cultivate a valuable skill, take a class, take a workshop, all of these things are available to you. It's making it a daily practice as you move forward. All right, then as we move forward to May 23rd, on May 23rd, you're gonna have this beautiful full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. Now the sun has moved into your partnership sector. Uh, this is you plus somebody else. This could be love, negotiations, uh, cooperation. It could be with a business partner, a significant other. It could be with a client. It could be with a best friend. Uh, I'm going to say open enemies and exes are here. Um, this house has to do with your interactions with other people that has to do with any type of communication or negotiation. Now the full moon revolves around topics that have to do with first house themes of you, you being seen, um, your outlook, your mental, physical, spiritual health, well-being, your vitality, your strength. And so literally this could be um, endings, closures, revealing some things about yourself of this is who I was, this is who I am now. I've gone through this major transformation. I want to be known as a healer or I want to be known as a healthy person or, or like it's, it's whatever you want to be known as. The, the first house is your appearance. It's like your website or your business card. It's what you are presenting to the world. It's you being seen by others. And so there's going to be this, oh my gosh, I didn't know this about you. This is an ending. This is a closure. Wow, you have changed. And now it's time for the new beginnings that come with it. So I love this because um, it's you embarking on this new growth, new exploration, new expansion of your horizons of who are you. Um, you saying, 
no, I'm going to pursue more knowledge, more wisdom. I want to be known as somebody of an authority figure who knows about this. Uh, maybe you say, okay, I want to be known as a Reiki master. Well, this is going through Reiki one, Reiki two, um, working on your Reiki master. It's what do you want to be known as? Who do you want to be known as? And making those things happen saying, I, I want the knowledge, the wisdom, and the energy of this brings in the topics of starting something new that has to do with you and having this topics around, I want to explore, I want to commit to expanding my understanding of the world. This is a really powerful time for intellectual growth and broadening your perspectives. This is you saying, I have to do this. This is my calling. I feel good about this. I'm adventurous. Um, I'm ready for these new experiences, like bring it on. So an ending of the old, a beginning of a new. And so this could be maybe short trips. This could be taking a class, taking a workshop, but the focus is in the excitement of learning, uh, understanding and changing how it changes you, your health, your vitality, your outlook, your how your persona, your happiness, your self-expression, you, um, your interests, definitely about your interests. This is like definitely coming into, no, this is me and this is what I want to explore. Now, being a full moon, Sagittarius governs the realm of your thoughts and your beliefs and these ideas and philosophies that belong to like higher thinking, higher mind. And so the full moon is this really powerful time for you to sit and reflect and use it to use this time that you're sitting and meditating to reflect um, uh, possibly on like your own personal beliefs, your own personal philosophies, and the experiences that you've been going through and how things are changing you. And so um, connecting you on your spiritual journey and you saying, I need to tackle some of life's big, big questions of where am I going? How am I changing? How am I evolving? And what does this all mean to me? Because it's literally changing who you are. All right, so on the same day, I wanna bring in what I believe is probably the biggest aspect of the month. It is Jupiter in Taurus in your sixth house. Remember, that's the big theme of the month of, of expanding and making, um, making these plans, making these connections, making them a daily habit. Jupiter is in this harmonious aspect to Neptune in Pisces in your fourth house of your home, your foundation, your roots, your fun, your, 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 your parents, your grandparents. It's the people that have, uh, your traditions. It's the people who you feel are family or that are family or who, who have created you or built up. It also stands for real estate and property, but I'm, I'm going to stick on the family portion here. And so this harmonious aspect is saying, um, look, Jupiter wants to expand and uh, there's this harmonious um, link between these two planets saying um, I want something tangible but I want to transcend I want to blend Jupiter's expansive influence in the realm of material abundance of creating a solid foundation in which to build my life upon in order to move forward and grow. I want uh, the stability of Neptune's spiritual and imaginative depth of really what can a peaceful home look like? What does what what does my home look like? What does my family look like? And remember, family is not just blood family. This aspect is truly going to encourage you to have this um, grounded yet um, a soulful approach to where your dreams of home, family, traditions, and your ideals of of daily life and connection and having um, these practical steps with manifesting your visions and creating this reality of what you want to create. It fosters this atmosphere of benevolence of artistic creativity and your persona with your resources with the pursuit of your material security like 
I need to build a solid foundation. I need to have a solid home. I need to have money and resources coming in. But what does that look like? And I have this quest for spiritual enlightenment. I, I need to have this support and I can also enhance and support others. So you might, you might find yourself like during this transit that you are more inclined that you are giving to others why other like in your fourth house of home or remember the the, the sixth house also represents um, people that you want to like volunteer to help and this could be co-workers or like literally supporting others and so um, drawn to these artistic pursuits drawn to blending your pragmatism your idealism and all of this energy is really urging you to apply what are your dreams in a concrete way that you planted these seeds that will not only enrich your personal life, but will also support your community and the world around you in which you can give back to. So Sagittarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Capricorn Sun and Capricorn Rising, the Taurus energy has been going on in your fifth house. The fifth house for you represents children, creativity, where you want to explore, take risks, it's affairs, it's um, art and music, and it's where you express yourself, where you uh, like sports or gambling. It's whatever brings you fun and joy and pleasure. So you know that you've had this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction here, and this energy became exact in April, but it will continue until May 8th. So look for any synchronicities that bring people, places, and things into your life that aligns you with the changes that have been going on. Remember the Uranus has been uh, breaking all ties to anything, like really saying this is liberation of this area of your life. And Jupiter has been expanding these opportunities. So look for synchronicities up until May 8th. And um, May, June, and July are the three open months where you can plant seeds and there are no uh, personal planets stationed retrograde. So everything that's planted now has this ample opportunity to grow and evolve into something bigger and better. All right. So as we move forward to May 7th, on May 7th, we're going to have the first new moon of uh, past eclipse season, and it will be in your fifth house. I love this for you because uh, this is training your first house of self. So we know that this is benefiting your identity, your self-worth, um, how people see you. It's everything about you being seen. Like think of it as your website or your business card. It's who you are presenting to the world and these changes that are that are occurring, these potentials for major growth and evolving. Now, the sun rules over your eighth house. The eighth house for you is any connections that you have that with shared resources or the house of deep bonding. So this can be family members, this could be exes if there's alimony or child support, or this can be business partners or significant others. The eighth house is literally where we we keep our connections with others that that could be where you invest your money or where you've had these shared experiences. Um, anything that has to do with insurance, your private affairs, um, it's the house of uh, deep psychological like birth, death, and rebirth transformation. Now the sun rules that house, the moon rules over your partnership sector. I call the seventh house your plus one house. It is you plus a business partner, a significant other, best friend, client. Uh, it's your one-on-one -on -one relationships. It can include open enemies and exes, but just know that it's, it's the house of love, contracts, negotiations, cooperations, and this can be verbal or nonverbal. So we're taking these areas of your life and saying, how can I take the energy shifts that have been planted and we are now in this this growth opportunity to grow something new 
Well, with this new moon, it's in an earth sign. So we have Taurus. We know that you are planting seeds that will manifest and grow over a longer period of time. So set intentions for financial growth, financial stability um, with partnership or things that you have with clients or significant others. Remember, we're including your seventh and your eighth houses here. And so how can this um, enhance these negotiations, these cooperations, these these connections that you have with other people and look at this as how can I plant the seeds to manage my resources more effectively. Uh, Taurus is, is earth and it's ground, but this is the house of children or, or creativity. And how can I start these new um, creative projects? How can I start uh, where I want to take a risk or how can I look into, remember the fifth house is like gambling and it's recreation. And how can I bring this joy and this pleasure into my life? Now, I'm going to throw out there that the fifth house is also uh, love affairs, like connecting with people. So are you taking this love affair to like the next level or like in a partnership somehow? I'm also going to, um, uh, Taurus energy is about, taking care of yourself. Uh, Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus is here and it's about money and it's about personal resources, but it's also about self-care. And so what grounds you and what do you need in order to move forward with more fulfillment? This is trining your first house of self, building a legacy, building something over a longer period of time that will, will evolve, change, and grow into something better. And so this could literally be you working in your garden or this could be you taking care of yourself or planning um, planning to get that massage or a nice hot bath. I encourage you to plant the seeds for these long-term goals that um, that deeply move you because this is this is a Taurus energy is more about patience and perseverance. So what is it that you want to grow? Do you want to grow a business? Do you want to grow a home? Do you want to grow your skill set? What do you want to plant the seeds that the eclipses have evolved and shown you? And Uranus and Jupiter has said, um, let's, let's limit the amount of channels that you have in your life. Let's disrupt some things in order to liberate you and give you freedom from. And so what are you getting freedom from? from look at this in a, a positive way to say and now i want to grow these things in my life i want to grow these areas of my life all right then as we move forward on may 23rd we're going to have a full moon in the beautiful fiery sign of Sagittarius. So the moon has now moved into your sixth house. So the sixth house is creating, taking these, uh, the new moon that you started, planting these seeds and saying, how can I make this habit? How can I take care of myself? The sixth house is daily routine, nutrition, pets, self-care. How do I care for others? The sixth house is, um, alternative health and healing, alternative ways of doing things. So the sun is focused on this, but the moon is in your 12th house. The 12th house is your dreams, your intuition, psychic ability. So this could be ending some things. Remember, full moons are endings, closures. So this could be ending a time of isolation. It could be ending or understanding an illness. This could be you saying, I get it. I, I'm, I'm not crazy. I, I have been reliving the same thing over and over, like by understanding past life regressions or understanding um, where the karma has come from and saying, I'm going to release myself from this. I'm going to end some things from this because the eclipse in your fourth house is also what you have brought into this lifetime with you, either from your ancestors or from generational, like great grandparent to the grandparent to you, or from past lives. And so you could look at this as, I now have this burst of energy. I'm now ready to move forward and explore some things. Um, now with this, this could be you saying, I'm ready to um, ex explore um, more knowledge, more wisdom about things that are more secretive. Maybe you wanna dive into 
palmistry or past life regressions or the Akashic records or meditation, anything that's done in the private of your own home. And you want to explore this for intellectual growth and literally for broadening your perspectives, for like wanting to understand um, certain things in your life. So you could be signing up for an online course or, or something that you want to commit to uh, learning about that you will understand why things are going on with you where things like maybe you just want to understand where did that trait come from now also with Sagittarius energy it's about uh, loving the adventure and what else can you do with the adventure learning traveling connecting with other people that are like-minded um, exploring um, I would say exploring exploring other realms, uh, exploring your dreams. This could be through astral travel, astral projection, understanding uh, through your dreams where else your dreams can take you and the answers that you can get through um, your ancestors, through your spirit guide, through your spirit animals, through shamanic work. This is an opportunity for you to say, I, I, I need to heal and I want to connect with my higher power, my divine, and there will be some kind of revelation and some kind of closure and an opportunity to move forward. All right, then on the same day, uh, which I think is probably going to be the biggest aspect of this month, is going to be the Jupiter in Taurus in your fifth house. Um, at 29 degrees so it's just getting ready to leave this area of your life where you've planted these seeds and now it's in this beautiful harmonious sextile to neptune in pisces in your third house now neptune loves to be in pisces here it's very happy it's watery it's intuitive and the third house is all about how you communicate with people on a daily basis it's the way that you gather information and disseminate information and a sextile is a harmonious aspect where these two planets they're talking and working together they're allowing they're allowing for growth that's beautiful it's harmonious between uh, the tangent of things that are for sure and the transcendent of the mystical and blending Jupiter's expansive energy to influence the realm of I would like to bring in material abundance. I would like to have stability. And Neptune has this spiritual, uh, imaginative depth to it. That it's like if you dream it, you can believe it. And remember, Jupiter is in this beautiful uh, trying to who you are. So this is supporting what you want to do. This aspect is really encouraging you to have this grounded yet soulful approach to how you're going to grow, evolve, and change. It's where your dreams are meeting your ideals about what's pursued and making these practical steps to make these things happen. It's about making your visions and dreams and turning them into a reality. It fosters this atmosphere of, of benevolence, of artistic creativity, of childlike passion, of, of tapping into your inner child, and also including the pursuit of material security and the quest for the spiritual enlightenment. You have a lot going on with taking the ethereal realm and the earthly realm and then like combining what you're doing and manifesting for its greater uh, transit for the great your greatest good this transit offers this unique opportunity to blend your pragmatism and your idealism of what you are doing urging you to apply your dreams in a more concrete way to move forward not only to enrich you but also like your personal life but what can you bring to your community and to other people that are around you how can you take your gifts and your talents and where you're growing evolving and changing and saying this isn't only good for me i need to share this with other people i need to share what i know and how i know this and and the way that i'm moving about things with other people in the world neptune is 
is of the hive mind. It's unity and community. So Capricorn, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon or full moon consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Aquarius Sun and Aquarius Rising, the Taurus energy has really had you focused um, mainly for the last year on your fourth house of your home and your family and traditions and creating stability for yourself. Like what are you trying to manifest and to grow? Now, the eclipses are occurring in your third house of communication and let's think outside the box, but the growing, changing and evolving is occurring in what are you creating for your own traditions. Now, Jupiter and Uranus had a conjunction and it created a lot of havoc, a lot of shakeups, a lot of forcing you into change and growth, which affected not only your first house of self, but partnership and your career. Now, what's coming from this is the manifestation of it is the, the potentials are still growing until May 8th. So look for anything that's synchronistic in your life that brings people, places, and things that offer these opportunities for growth and evolution within your home up until May 8th. All right, then as we move forward to May 7th, on May 7th, you're going to have this uh, beautiful new moon and it is in your fourth house of home. So now we've had this eclipse, we've had the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, and now we have all of May, June, and July as a free and clear period in order for you to plant the seeds for future growth, that the tides are going out, that we have this opportunity for growth and change of any seeds that's planted, they will grow over this period of time. So we have the sun, which represents your partnership sector. It's your one plus one house. You with a business partner, you with a significant other, with clients, with your best friend. It's love, contractual agreements, negotiations. I am going to throw in there open enemies and exes because that might um, have an effect over what is um, being the seeds that are being planted at this time. Now the moon, the moon rolls over your sixth house of creating daily habits, a need for security in order to take care of like yourself, um, nutrition, um, better health, make it a daily habit, um, seeking health benefits out of alternative, like going to see a chiropractor, going to see a nutritionist, um, a counselor, a mentor. The sixth house is how do I take care of myself on a daily basis? Who do I seek outside guidance from to help me navigate the things that are going on in my life? Somebody who knows a little bit better. So this is you seeking out know better, do better. And so you're planting these seeds. And um, so what's coming from it is there could be financial growth, financial stability. This is bringing about a way for you to enhance your income, uh, your resources in order to create a stable foundation, a stable home. The fourth house also represents like real estate, people who feel like home, and maybe it's creating family members wherever you live out of the people that you're connected to. It doesn't always mean like blood family. It can mean like your star family or your spirit family. It's the people that feel like family to you. Now, I would encourage you to take care of yourself because um, Venus is the ruler of, and Venus is about love and money, but she's also about aesthetics and beauty. And so this is you saying, in order to be stable, I need to tap into my health and my well-being, mental, physical, spiritual, psychological, emotional. I have to eat better. I have to make sure that um, I take time out, earth, ground, maybe schedule a massage, schedule that phone call, connect with people. This is starting or initiating um, a, a healthy routine that you can maintain over a longer period of time. Now, because this is in the sign of Taurus, I'm encouraging you to um, plant these long-term goals of things that mean 
a great deal to you because it'll be planted in earth. It's about uh, needing persistence and patience in order for things to grow over over an extended period of time. So whether it's I want to buy a home, I want to start a new business, I want to work on uh, this skill set that I have and I need to go back to school or I need to learn this, that's what you can plant these seeds for. All right, then as we move forward to May 23rd, on May 23rd, we're going to have this uh, beautiful full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. Now, the sun has just shifted into your fifth house saying, I planted these seeds and I need to have more fun. I need to be able to take these risks. I need to be creative with what I am doing. The sun is there, but the endings are coming in your 11th house of your social circles, your networks, your, your hopes, your dreams, your goals. So there's like an ending or a closing of some goals or some groups maybe that you were part of and now you're going to be moving on from them now full moons always uh they reveal things they they bring about these endings and in the sign of sagittarius it's about exploration embracing growth embracing this change um, expansion of your horizons so i'm done with this goal i now need to focus on this now I've, I've i've accomplished this these are my new hopes dreams wishes goals and these are my new networks that are going to help me align with what i want to do and so it could be embarking on a new learning journey this could be you being in the pursuit of wisdom and knowledge and saying who do i connect up with um, maybe uh, studying new subjects uh, connecting up with the uh, like the ele the 11th house is your social circles your networks of who you can gain information from by working with them by sharing with them by networking with them and so this is you starting off on a new journey and saying how can I make this happen and who do I need to network or connect up with in order to uh, manifest this, to bring about the focus of excitement, of creativity, of exploring new places, new cultures, things that will feed your soul. Now, because it's a full moon, I'm encouraging you also to uh, stop and pause and go within and give a few minutes to look at where you are on your spiritual journey. This uh, Sagittarius energy is about your beliefs, your philosophies, and your higher thinking. And there's been a lot of things that have, have gone on over the last six months that have, that have transpired and really forced you out of your comfort zone and you are now given this opportunity to reevaluate your own beliefs, your own philosophies that you live by, and now say, I need to focus on like life's big questions. And do I share them with other people? Do I connect? Do I, do I meditate and then only share them with my higher self? Do I, uh, it's about you gaining clarity about what is truth and what is wisdom and what this means to you personally for you to reach and attain the goals that you want to do. All right, then um, on the same day, what I believe to be uh, probably the biggest aspect of the month is Jupiter at 29 degrees in the sign of Taurus at your home, Jupiter is now ready to move off into the sign of Gemini, almost there. And it's in this sextile to Neptune in Pisces in your second house of your cash, your property, your skill set, your self-worth. The, the second house is everything that has to do with your salary, your income. It, it trines your, your job, your career, your like you in the outside world. So we know that there's something going on. There's this aspect that's going on between these two planets or they're talking to each other and it's creating this like beautiful harmonious blend that's linking what I want to do in order to feel secure emotionally, phys physically, spiritually, because the second house is about your self-worth and your resources. It's what you have. And in the sign of Pisces, it's wanting to be at one with the universe. It's I have something and then it's gone. And like, how can we all share together? It's blending this harmonious link between what is tangible your resources and um 
combining it with the ever expansive Jupiter that has to do with your fourth house of creating a stable home, creating um, um, uh, not just a, 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 your traditions and your property, but it's like, I need to create stability and I want uh, spirituality to be a big part of this. And Jupiter's expansive in the realm of like this material abundance with the stability of Neptune's spiritual and imaginative depth of feeling it, knowing it, having this intuition to guide you. This aspect, it really en encourages you to have this grounded, um, yet this soulful approach to how you're growing and where your dreams and your ideals, they can be pursued and creating these practical steps. Remember, you have this new moon, so how can I have, uh, how can I manifest these visions that I have and bring them into a reality? It's gonna be fostering the atmosphere of artistic crea uh, creativity, and saying, I have to think outside the box, I need to be unique about this, while I pursue material security, and I'm on a quest for spiritual enlightenment, and how does this all work together to support and enhance each other? And so you might find that you might be inclined to uh, help uh, others at this time. Uh, you might be using your resources and your abundance of excess that if you have any of what you can uh, give to others to benefit other people uh, and this could be like what I said is this is about your family unit or what you feel to be your family unit and this is an opportunity to be um, make make meaningful your new moon intentions as spiritually meaningful and potentially uh, financially lucrative of what what can I gain from this for stability. And so this transit offers you this opportunity of blending pragmatism and idealism all together, urging you to really apply your dreams in this concrete way of what is it that you want? Are you trying to create a home? Are you trying to take classes or workshops? Like, what do you want to do? And how do you enrich not only your life, but maybe the people that live in your home or your community or in the world that's around you? So Aquarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Pisces Sun and Pisces Rising, the Taurus energy has been uh, changing, evolving, and growing your third house of how you communicate, um, technology, science, travel, um, neighbors, uh, like who you communicate on a daily basis. So neighbors, siblings, cousins, um, people that you email. Uh, the third house represents everything with how you say and do things, how you um, gather information and how you disseminate it and share it out there. It's, it's like short distance travel, but it's also communication. So we had this Jupiter Uranus conjunction and the energy is still um, it's still offering these uh, man manifestation uh, potentials for growth and evolution until May 8th. So I would look for all synchronicity that comes to you either in the form of people, places, and things. And this could be science, technology, email, phone, um, like seeing something on YouTube or hearing about something from a neighbor. All of this is oppor an opportunity for growth and liberation and evolution. Now, knowing this, uh, you are now going to be planting the seeds. So on May 7th, on May 7th, you're going to have a new moon. And this is a beautiful time to plant the seeds into earth, into Taurus, that they will grow change and evolve over time. Now we have May, June, July as three open months of a time period of whatever you are putting out into the universe, all the in all the um, 
personal planets are moving direct. So it's like the universe is saying, you get the green light, go ahead. It's time to grow. It's time to change. It's time to evolve. So you have um, the sun representing your daily habits and taking care of yourself and uh, thinking outside the box with alternative health and healing. And it's a balance between home and work. And it's who I go to for advice. This could be a counselor, a mentor, a guide. It's who you connect with others in order to do better for you. Now, the moon represents your fifth house of children or creativity or lovers or um, where you're willing to take a risk. The fifth house is everything that brings you personal joy and pleasure. So you are planting these seeds with those thoughts in mind. And it's in a beautiful sextile to your first house of self. So we know that this has to do with uh, you becoming one with the universe and saying, I have been pushed past um, all of these boundaries. I have made um, all of these these changes. I, it, things have been uncomfortable. It's like hard and fast changes of major endings and new beginnings. And now you're saying, look, now's the time that I can plant the seeds, accept whatever the universe, like it's, it's like bringing it to you. And so set your intentions definitely for financial growth. This is you saying, I want to enhance my income. Uh, my, I want to manage my resources with uh, greater ease or more effectively. And this could be for, with using science, technology, um, AI, um, like all science and technology of all of the services that you have, you just have to learn how to use them for the greater good of. And so you saying, I need to, I need to dive into this. I need to work smarter, not harder at what I'm doing. I'm also going to encourage you to focus on your self care. Venus is here in the sign of Taurus, you know, like the ruler of, and, and this is grounding you in your senses of starting a new healthy eating plan. This could be, I need to get out and garden. I need to initiate a new um, health routine where I make this a daily habit of, of walking the dog or taking my vitamins or um, it's anything that you say, okay, maybe I need to speak with my counselor or it's you taking care of you, your mind, your body, your spirit, your temple, and focusing in on how can I plant these seeds that the things that I'm starting have a really good chance of growing. It's planting them into the soil that they can be cultivated. It's you saying that I need to plant these long-term goals that will evolve over a longer period of time that um, matter deeply to you because it's emphasizing persistence and patience. That's what Taurus energy is. So this could be, I want to buy a home. I want to start a new business. I want to cultivate uh, this, this skill set, which means I need to take a class or a workshop or I want to travel there. How do I make this happen? I want to understand this technology. How do I make this happen? Plant the seeds. The rest will follow suit. So then as we move forward to uh, May 23rd, on May 23rd, you're going to have this beautiful full moon in the sign of Sagittarius. So the sun has now moved into your fourth house of home, family, stability, traditions, and it's saying, okay, let's create some stability here. Now the moon is full at the top of your chart, which is your career, authority figures, legacy, uh, your reputation, how you want to be seen. A full moon here can be an ending, a closure, or revealing some things. So this could be uh, leaving a chapter of your life behind. This could be um, leaving uh, somewhere that you're working. And this could also be revealing some things about authority figures or um, what it is that you really want to do. Are you really happy here? Or do you want to climb this ladder? Like, what is it? It's focused on bigger, brighter, and better. The full moon in Sagittarius is about adventurous energy. It's a quest for meaning and knowledge and exploration and growth and expansion of all of your horizons. So whatever is being revealed here, it's an opportunity for you to say there's an ending and then it's quickly followed by this new beginning. It's an opportunity for you to embark possibly on a learning journey 
because Sagittarius is about the pursuit of knowledge, um, wisdom. Full moons, they they give you this opportunity that says, I I need to study this. I need to learn this. I want to I want to go there. This is a powerful time for you to tap into intellectual growth, connecting with cross-cultural uh, experiences with people to understand more of the world. So I want to go there. I want to take that class. I want to take that workshop. I want to teach that. I want to, it's legal matters. It's publishing and it's broadening your perspectives. So it's ending something, but it's it's beginning this, this you planning for your next big adventure. Sagittarius is adventurous and it loves the thrill of these new experiences. And so what are you doing for your job? Are you like climbing up this ladder or saying, I need to travel more for it, um, planning my next journey? Or am I looking for, um, am I just looking for adventure? Am I, am I done with this or am I ready to move on to something else? Am I ready to discover something new, new cultures or something that feeds this, your soul for it, this, this wanderlust that you have for, for life in general? I would encourage you to um, take a moment because uh, Sagittarius governs the realm of beliefs and philosophies and higher thinking. And with all of the things that have been going on over the last six months, the full moon is this powerful time that you can sit and uh, reflect and go inward and say, I think I need to examine or reevaluate my own personal beliefs, my own philosophies that I live by because I've changed, I've grown, I've evolved. And so you can either talk about this with a friend, you can journal with this, or you can take some time to just tap in to um, meditation with your higher self. This is a, a, a beautiful, potent time for you to gain this clarity of, of what is truth and wisdom to you and how can you gain more of it um, with with you in the outside world, like you as a career, you as an authority figure, you with your reputation, you with your professional life, uh, uh, honors, awards, you being seen in the outside world. All right, then uh, the last thing which I consider to probably be uh, the biggest aspect of this month, it's happening on also the same day, May 23rd, we have Jupiter in Taurus, getting ready to like these are the last moments of it jupiter is in this beautiful trine i'm sorry a sextile to neptune and pisces in your first house of self so the first house represents your health your habits you being seen your outlook on life um i look at it as your business card your website it's your appearance your personality your drive your interest and Pisces is watery, intuitive, and it's psychic and, and like feeling your feels. And not only your feels, it's feeling everybody else's feels. So there's this sextile, which is a harmonious aspect between these two planets. And it's creating this beautiful, harmonious opportunity of what is tangible and what is transcendent. Um, blending Jupiter's expansive uh, influence in the realm of material abundance with communication and science and technology and short distance travel and this connection that you have with other people. It's you connecting with other people that are like closer to home. Neptune has this spiritual and imaginative depth and being able to connect with others through either art or creativity or just words, beautiful words. This aspect encourages this grounded yet soulful approach to the way that you want to grow, change, and evolve with siblings, neighbors, cousins, and um, technology and the way that you communicate, the way that you want to show people who you are, where your dreams and your ideals can be pursued using practical grounded steps. Remember, Taurus is earth. It's the bull. It's one step at a time. And how do you use this energy in order to manifest your visions, Neptune, into a reality of who you are? What do you want to create for your own personal reality? And so this energy is fostering this atmosphere of artistic creativity. It's you being in pursuit of um, like 
material security and the way that you communicate, who you're communicating with, a quest for spiritual enlightenment, uh, wanting this connection uh, in order to support others. During this transit, this might be a time where you are helping others or you're in tune to their needs and you might be using your resources in order to support them with whatever's going on with them. Um, this transit offers this really unique opportunity to blend pragmatism and idealism, urging you to apply your talents of who are you? Who are you bringing to the table? What skill set do you have in a concrete way? Um, for your dreams that not only enrich your personal life but can in, uh, like can support your community those people that are closest to you your neighbors your the people that you communicate with on a daily basis um using science technology or or a gift or a skill set that you have and so it's not only just for you it's it'll benefit you but how else can it benefit everybody else that's around you so Pisces, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe.